we studied about secondary metabolism, its role in plants, uh, what are the different uh, functions of secondary metabolites. For example, what are the different functions of secondary metabolites in plants? One is defense in specialized functions like ripening, attracting pollinators, completing the cycle and to overcome competition for survival. Okay. So, then we went on to see what are the major class of secondary metabolites in plants. What were the major class of uh, secondary metabolites found in plants? So, nitrogen containing compounds, terpenes and phenolics. So, uh, we then studied in detail about these three classes. Now, we were at alkaloids. So, alkaloids is one of the nitrogen containing compounds. There are almost 15,000 different types of alkaloids present. So, now uh, in these is uh, we also have other nitrogen containing compounds which are not that well known commercially utilized, but have a function to play in the plant defense. So, talking about alkaloids, alkaloids they are generally used as anti herbivore in the plants system. They are toxic to humans and most nitrogenous secondary metabolites are synthesized from amino acids. So, alkaloids their backbone will be amino acids majorly what three amino acids lysine, tyrosine or tryptophan. Now, the alkaloids they as I said these are almost 15,000 present in the plants and the skeleton may also be. So, now uh, alkaloids like for example, camptothecin it belongs to monoterpene indole alkaloids. So, which means that its structural moiety also has the nitrogen containing moiety as well as the terpene moiety. So, there are many such secondary metabolites as I mentioned in the previous class that what were the different pathways? from primary metabolism, then it went on to secondary metabolism, shikimate pathway was involved, MEP pathway was involved, mevalonate pathway was involved. So, either singly these pathways are leading to products or combining the two pro, uh, pathways are combining to give intermediate subsequently leading to different types of secondary metabolites. So, which means that the array is so widespread. So, apart from the alkaloids which we know, then there are other alkaloids where air arginine for example, is involved. So, this is nicotine, your cocaine, morphine, caffeine, these are also parts of alkaloids. They are used as deterrents for mammals, animals, for humans. So, they act as either as feeding deterrents, they directly act as toxins or they will disturb the digestion process of the pathogen or the herbivore. Now, for example, your nicotinic acid the backbone uh, in case of nicotine it is obtained from ornithine, ornithine is a precursor as an intermediate in arginine biosynthesis. Now, ornithine is a non proteinaceous amino acid. Now, B vitamin which is nicotinic acid is a precursor of the pyridine moiety of this alkaloid nicotine. So, what is pyridine moiety? The nitrogen containing ring. So, it is C 5 H 5 N. So, now this is pyridine moiety which is obtained from the nicotinic acid. Now, alkaloids were thought to be nitrogen. So, initially it was thought that because they were nitrogen containing compounds. So, people are, were of the belief that either they are acting as nitrogen sources for the plant compounds which are stored have stored nitrogen or they are nitrogenous base like urea or uric acid in mammals. Or, uh, or they might be acting as growth regulators. Later it was found that they are performing higher functions of defense in the plants by either toxicity function or by feeding deterrence. Now, nitrogen containing other secondary metabolites they are cyanogenic glycosides and glucosinolates. Now, cyanogenic glycosides which means that sometimes for the plant as we were discussing for it to become non toxic they are joined with a as conjugates with a sugar moiety. So, for example, this cyanogenic glycosides. Now, after hydrolysis or the enzymes which are present in the vicinity once the uh, cell gets ruptured these conjugates will be exposed to the enzymes which are in the vicinity and the final breakdown to such toxic compounds which can be volatile like for example, hydrogen cyanide which gets released which can either directly damage the pathogen 
or which can help to trigger the signal cascade mechanism in the plant itself. So, two groups of these substances cyanogenic glycosides and glucosinolates. Now, they are themselves not toxic, but are readily broken down to give off poisons. For example, I was saying hydrogen cyanide, now which may be volatile when the plant is crushed. Now, they are stored in the intact plant separately from the enzymes that will hydrolyze them as I said to perform the final toxic breakdown product. Now, cyanogenic glycosides they release hydrogen cyanide which is a well known toxic compound. Now, the presence of cyanogenic glycosides deters feeding by insects and other herbivores like snails and slugs. So, this is like um, it flows through generations. If uh, so, it is kind of uh, acquired deterrence. Now, the second class of plant glycosides I was talking about is glucosinolates, which are also called as mustard oil glycosides. They are present in plants like your cabbage or uh, your uh, radish, which has a very different taste, strong taste. So, it acts like a feeding deterrent for the feeders. So, glucosinolate breakdown is catalyzed by a hydrolytic enzyme which is thioglucosidase or myrosinase that cleaves glucose from its bond with the sulfur atom. So, it is generally present as conjugates, the conjugates may not be toxic, but the final breakdown may lead to the impactful compound. So, they generally lead to uh, bad smell or strong smell and taste in the fruits or in the plant parts. Now, non-protein amino acids, many plants they contain unusual amino acids which are called as non-protein amino acids which get incorporated in the proteins. So, for example, cannabinine it can be mistakenly or sometimes these non-amino acids, non-protein amino acids they can also get replace the amino acid in the metabolism of that herbivore. So, which may then disturb the metabolism of the herbivore. For example, it is written here cannabinine which can replace arginine. So, this is what I was talking about primary metabolism leading to secondary metabolism. In secondary metabolism, the major pathways involved shikimic acid, mevalonic acid pathway, MEP pathway which is methyl erythritol phosphate pathway. So, now we were also talking about the two different types of defense which are present in plants one is constitutive defense and the other is induced defense. In order to conserve the resources, the plant would not like to use all at once. So, there is first line of defense and only when needed there is a stronger much stronger second line of defense. Once it has been found that the second line of defense is needed and what caters to this and what induces the second line of defense we will see to that. So, where your signal cascade pathways are involved. So, let us first talk of the constitutive defense. What is constitutive defense in the plants? Now, this is species specific. The, the secondary metabolites which may be present inherently in that plant may not be present in the other species. So, they may exist as stored compounds, conjugated compounds to reduce toxicity or as precursors of the active compound which can easily be activated if the plant is damaged. Now, most of the defensive secondary metabolites are constitutive defense. For example, if you find that a particular secondary metabolite is present in lower amounts throughout the plant and irrespective of the season, then it is a constitutive line of defense where the machinery, the enzymes needed to produce that are always present. Now, induced defense on the other hand it is initiated only after the actual damage has occurred which means de novo synthesis happens which means that the proteins which are required to produce they are not present, but these compounds are only obtained de novo which means transcription translation begins only after the damage has happened. But the key here whether the plant would be able to survive which species is stronger than the other to survive such depends on how fast the plant is producing these compounds. So, they include the production of defensive proteins such as lectins and protease inhibitors as well as production of toxic secondary metabolites. 
in principle induced defenses require a small investment obviously because they are not produced all the time. So, it is like conserving the resource of the plant the carbon and the energy. Now, how do the plants recognize? Plants recognize specific components in case of insects they recognize specific components of insects which may also include saliva. So, now the plant responds to the damage by insect herbivores it involves both the wound response and also the response towards insect bearing components. Now, the recognition of certain insect derived compounds which we class as elicitors. Now, these elicitors once recognized they lead to induction of the signal cascade in the plants. Repeated mechanical wounding can also induce responses similar to that caused by the insect herbivory. Now, molecules like insect saliva can act as enhancers or elicitors, elicitors are nothing but stimulus to the defense second line of defense. Now, plants recognize these elicitors and activate a complex signal transduction pathway. One of the products of this complex signal transduction pathway is jasmonic acid. Now, this jasmonic acid in turn once produced through the phloem flows to the different parts of the plant. Sometimes it gets conjugated as methyl jasmonate and methylated and becomes volatile such that this becomes a signal for the nearing plants and they all flow through the phloem to different parts of the plant. So, insect derived elicitors can trigger the signaling pathway systematically initiating defensive responses in distant regions of the plant or even the nearing plants. So, the major signaling pathway as I said is the jasmonic acid formation pathway which is called as octadecanoid pathway. Now, in octadecanoid pathway it leads to the production of the plant hormone which we know as jasmonic acid. Now, jasmonic acid levels steeply rise upon the pathogen attack herbivore attack and trigger the production of many proteins which are called as pathogen related proteins. Now, these proteins form the part of, of signal cascade mechanism. So, either these proteins will directly be uh, functioning as chitinases or hydrolytic enzymes or proteases which may damage the pathogen or they may induce the proteins in the biosynthetic pathway of the second line of defense such that the uh, production of much stronger and much specific secondary metabolites begins in the plants. So, two organelles which are involved in jasmonic acid formation they are chloroplast and peroxisome just for information. Now, jasmonic acid it is known to induce the transcription of host of genes involved in the defensive mechanism. So, it is like um, umbrella or a big. So, it is affect is very widespread a number of like transcription factors. So, a number of enzymes uh, expression gets affected by induced by jasmonic acid. Amongst the genes it induces those that encode key enzymes in all the major pathways for secondary metabolite biosynthesis. So, therefore, you will notice that when plant cell bioprocess are optimized jasmonic acid, salicylic acid which are part of these signal cascades are very well known elicitors used in plant biotechnology for enhancing the yield of the secondary metabolite. Because their mode of action is so widespread that they are general elicitors they are not species specific. So, in most of the cases if you add they work. Several other signaling compounds like ethylene, ethylene is also a plant hormone, but it also acts as a signaling molecule to induce secondary metabolism. So, ethylene salicylic acid, methyl salicylate. So, methylated um, these components can become volatile which may act as volatile signals to the other parts of the plant itself or the nearing plants. The concerted action of these signaling compounds is necessary for the full activation of induced defenses. So, it is not just that only one at a time would happen. So, uh, it is not that only jasmonic acid would be produced the plant then because everything is a part of that signal cascade. So, everything gets produced and everything in turn then induces a different line of defense. 
So, therefore, the plant is able to have such strong multiple mode of action based defense against the pathogens. Now, among the diverse components of plant defensive arsenals, proteins that interfere with the herbivore digestions are uh, also induced by jasmonic acid. Like for example, legume synthesized alpha amylase inhibitors. Now, uh, this blocks the action of alpha amylase. Alpha amylase will be for starch. So, obviously, it would like to block and those which are uh, pathogens to this kind of plant where the starch is stored would certainly have alpha amylase to utilize that as carbon source. So, therefore, they will produced alpha amylase inhibitors so as to deter the feeding. Other plant species, lectins, defensive proteins that bind to carbohydrates or carbohydrates containing proteins. Now, in this what happens? These once they bind, they will bind to your epithelial cells of the digestive system and therefore, disturb the digestion of the food. That is also one of the ways for feeding deterrence. Now, the best known anti digestive proteins in plants are the protease inhibitors. So, that is like alpha amylase inhibitor, it is a protease inhibitor which the plants release. Some of the plants you must have heard, uh, our parents say stay away from it. I do not know whether you have heard. Uh, so, that is because these toxins are nothing but secondary metabolites which may either directly act as toxins or may disturb the digestion of your system. The induction and release of volatiles in response to insect herbivore damage. Now, the combination of molecules emitted is often specific for each insect herbivore. There can be so many different types of pathogens. So, either the plant should have a very generalized strong mode of action, but you will observe that sometimes the insects are also very specific to a particular variety of the plant. Like for example, your cotton, Bt cotton came. So, it is always against a particular uh, uh, pest which is generally known to attack that plant. So, you need uh, that pest specific toxin. So, plants are also known to secrete or produce insect specific toxins and some are general. Now, typically includes representatives from these three major classes where terpenes, phenolics and alkaloids are involved. Now, there are other forms of secondary metabolites which are called as green leaf volatiles. Now, green leaf volatiles are mixtures of terpenoids and fatty acids. Now, you will also find that many of these are present in near the surface, leaf surface or will be present in the membranes of the cells because that is the first line which will be broken. Anything which would try to attack would first try to lyse the cell through piercing through the cuticle which is one of the barriers, then through the cell wall. So, once it crosses the cell wall, then comes the cell membrane. So, therefore, these secondary metabolites which can deter or which can be toxins are sometimes present on these surfaces including your cuticle, leaf surface or your bark or even your cell membranes like saponins are known to be present near the membranes. So, green leaf volatiles they act as how they attract the natural and enemies of the pathogens. So, because they are volatiles they will send cues to the predators of these pathogens who will then find out that through these cues that where the host is and this is how the plant. So, which means how intelligent is the machinery and how widespread is the plant defense in what different ways it protects. It is very interesting. They attract natural enemies which are predators or parasites of the attacking insect herbivore that utilize the volatiles as cues to find their prey or host as I said. Like there is an example, it is given here that uh, moths when they, uh, they lay eggs on the leaves. So, now in order to deter further laying of eggs by other moths, moths they produce such volatile compounds which will then give signals to the other moths not to in these different ways not to come to that leaf or that plant for further egg laying. 
So, many of these compounds remain attached to the surface of the leaf and serve as feeding deterrents because of their taste. Sometimes the taste would be so bad that they will that will deter the feeding even to us. We do not prefer some fruits which are bad tasting. So, plants are continuously exposed to diverse array of pathogens. Now, to be successful these pathogens have developed various strategies. So, both the sides the fight is going on the plant is increasing its defense and the pathogens are also clever enough to create ways new ways of breaking this line of defense. So, some penetrate through the cuticle the cell wall directly by secreting lytic enzymes which can digest these mechanical barriers. So, if you know why is something happening in nature obviously, you can get cues of what can be the potential applications of these. So, if you know that these pathogens are capable of uh, producing lytic enzymes which can break down the plant cell wall obviously, they would have enzymes which might be capable of lignin degradation or cellulose degradation, hemicellulose degradation which can give you cues for its other applications. So, it is very important to understand why is something something happening in literature, literature I mean nature. Now, so which digest these mechanical barriers. Now, other enter the plant through natural openings stomata we know is one of the natural openings. It is also written that lenticles. Now, lenticles if you see some of these plants they are they have a very rough surface. You go and type it on Google you will be able to see these are open spaces especially in tree species because in tree species uh, they, there is many layers of cortex and also gas exchange is difficult. So, there are open spaces kept uh, in the plant in the trunk which can lead to this gas exchange. Now, these open spaces although they are meant for gas exchange they become also an opening for pathogens to enter. So, there is always a balancing out between the merit and the demerit. A third category invades the plant through wounding sites whenever there is a wound this may enter. Now, for example, the those caused by the insect herbivores additionally many viruses these may enter. So, sometimes some of the insects they suppose for even nectar they pierce through the vascular bundle to get the food. Now, these may in turn then these viruses may travel through while they have pierced these vascular bundles for food the virus will enter and then spread throughout the plant. Now, phloem feeders this is one of the examples like for example, white flies and aphids they deposit pathogens directly into the vascular system and from which they can easily get transmitted to the entire plant. So, now plant has to cater to this problem also. Now, Several classes of secondary metabolites have strong antimicrobial activity. So, generally because most of it is um, uh, fungus then uh, single microorganism bacterial bacterial species then uh, so there is majority of secondary metabolites you will find that they will be having antimicrobial activity. Now, saponins is a group of triterpenes that disrupts fungal membranes by binding to sterols. Sterols is a part of the phospholipid membranes. So, it disrupts the <coughs> sterols in the membranes of fungal cultures. Now, genetic approaches now have demonstrated for example, here in oat cell lines which were mutated to reduce the production of saponins it was found that they were they became more susceptible to fungal attack than the mutant lines which had higher amount of saponins. Now, after being infected by a pathogen plant deploy a broad spectrum of defenses against the invading microbes. Now, the common defense is called as the hypersensitive response. What is this? As soon as the pathogen attacks a part of the plant the nearing cells they die immediately. Now, once they die is to prevent any nutrients to be provided to that pathogen which has attacked. So, which means that it tries to deprive that 
pathogen of the nutrients. So, there is a sacrifice involved. So, nearing the wounding site, these cells die. And how do they die? There is a surge of, as soon as the attack happens, there is a surge of toxic gases like nitric oxide accumulation or there will be higher accumulation of oxygen radicals, reactive oxygen species, which will cause the death of the cells also and may also in turn help in direct damage to the pathogen also. So, cells in the vicinity of the infection synthesize a burst of toxic compounds formed by the reduction of molecular oxygen, reactive oxygen species. Now, active oxygen species may contribute to host cell death as part of hypersensitive response or act to kill the pathogen directly. Now, another defensive response is formation of hydrolytic enzymes that attack the cell wall of the pathogen itself. Like for example, chitinase in case of fungal cell walls or can even be your hydrolases or your gluconases or uh, what else, proteases. So, there can be different types of enzymes, lytic enzymes which are produced which can directly harm the pathogen. So, these hydrolytic enzymes belong to a group of proteins that are closely associated with the pathogen and they are called as pathogen related proteins, PR proteins. Now, response of the plants to bacterial and fungal invasion is the synthesis of phytoalexins. Now, phytoalexins they are not always present as the constitutive defense but they are produced as a result of the damage caused by a particular pathogen. Now, phytoalexins are chemically diverse group of secondary metabolites with strong antimicrobial activity that accumulate around the site of infection. So, which means now the speed matters. The speed at which the de novo synthesis of these phytoalexins will be taking place as soon as the damage has happened. So, that determines the survival capability of a particular plant species against that pathogen. So, that is why you will see that some, path, some plants survive and the others do not because of the defense, how strong, how fast is the defense in a particular plant species against that particular pathogen. Now, phytoalexin production appears to be common mechanism of resistance to pathogenic microbes in wide range of plants. Now, for example, in leguminous plants such as alpha alpha and soya bean, isoflavonoids they are known to act as phytoalexins. In solanaceae plants which is potato, tomato or tobacco, various cisqui terpenes are produced as phytoalexins. Now, phytoalexins as I said are generally undetectable when there is no attack. They begin to form at higher amounts or at very large amounts at fast rate once the attack has happened. So, the point of control for the activation of these biosynthetic pathways is usually the initiation of gene transcription. Now, for this your what is involved? It is de novo synthesis. So, a signal cascade mechanism is involved where your jasmonic acid or salicylic acid, your ethylene, everything is involved. So, plants do not store any of the enzymatic machinery required for phytoalexin synthesis. After microbial invasion, they begin transcribing and translating the appropriate mRNA for that particular synthesis.